Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Delicious. Just wow. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and your money. And today, we're talking about payday, baby. Everyone's favorite day of the month. It is the best, isn't it? It feels good. Payday's great. It's almost like Christmas Day, but like twice a month for me, you know? Yeah. It has that level of joy. It's just exciting. Very exciting. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the emotional highs and lows of payday. We're going to talk about how some celebs... How they spent their first check. It's juicy. It's all good. And we're going to be sipping on a cocktail during this episode. And this one, what is it, George? We're balling out today with a a happy hour beverage called the Mint Julep. Heard of it? I've heard of it. I don't even know if I've ever had one before. Not one of this caliber. Why you say that? We've got the copper mule mug. We've got the fresh mint in there. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what's in it yet. But if you want to know what we think about it, you want the recipe, our rating, stick around to the end of the episode. I will say these cups are very heavy. Do you feel that? My arm is kind of tired already. they're very cold. Whew. There's, gonna be a, there's a lot it. of sacrifice Beauty is pain. in this episode, Beauty is but pain. we are doing what I always it say. for you all, for okay. sure. So before we talk about the spending habits of you know Tom Cruise or Serena Williams, let's talk about the two celebs you guys are obviously really here for, and really one celeb, Rachel Cruz. <laughs> Let's talk about payday for Rachel Cruz. Do you oh, remember no. your very first paycheck, Rachel? Um, like a yes, real one. Yeah. Not like I mowed a lawn or cleaned my room. So I like babysat. Denise and I had our own snack business when we were teenagers. That's right. Yep. So we had some money coming in from that. But I, I was too cool for all that, and I wanted to be employed at the mall. So I um, applied. How old were you? I was 16. Okay. And I worked at Libby Lou, <laughs> which what is that? some of y'all may not be familiar with Libby Lou. It was a store within a department store. I think it was Dillard's maybe, inside of Dillard's. And it was this tiny area. And little girls came and you could get your hair done, your makeup, your nails. People, kids would have parties. You would dress up. So you could be like a rock star. You could be the princess. Like they had like four. Like a costume party? Yeah, like four different like characters that these girls could dress up as. And then we at Libby Lou Workers did their hair and makeup. And I was terrible, George. What in the honey boo boo was was this job? (laughs) I know. So much pageantry. All I remember, the best thing that I took away, which I will do with my girls, is you paint your nails and then they stuck it in glitter and brought them up and kind of took like a fairy wand and did do, 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 do. So when their nails dried, they had glitter on them, which was very, I could do that one. But doing the hairstyles and all this, I think one mom got mad at me. She was like, this is not what I paid for. <laughs> oh, no. So anyways, I only lasted like- You're not qualified to be doing hairstyling? I lasted hairstyling. Like three months because I, because I got my first paycheck and I thought, I'm going back to babysitting. It was not a lot. Because minimum wage probably back then? Oh, sure. Like sure. Which bucks? is all I deserved, let's be honest. But it was not, I didn't make a lot and I ended up quitting. Actually, the boss told me I was asking too much time off. <laughs> Wow. Rachel's like, can I get another day off? Like, you just took a day off. I know. It was over Christmas. I was like, I'm going on 16-year-old Rachel is very busy. A lot going on. <laughs> That's wow. terrible, y'all. So I, I I, realized the mall job wasn't for me. How Would about you, you, George? Well, I want to know what you spent that first paycheck on. Do you remember? Mm. Oh, I probably what went. Kind of stuff? Oh, I probably went down to Hollister or wet seal and butt clothes, I'm sure, with my $16 and you whatever. had to cash the check first, I guess, right? How does that sure, work? Sure, yeah. Back I put it in my days. checking account, and it was just sad. Yeah. I was like, this is not. But it did feel like an adult, like going to the bank. Yeah, and then you see taxes are taken out. You see like an official paycheck. Yeah, it's a big deal. And this was before like direct deposit was a thing. Oh, sure, yeah. We feel so old. We're like ancient. <laughs> they gave us paper checks. We went down to the bank and put it in the big tube. Uh yeah, my first job was a doctor's office receptionist. <gasps> no, you weren't, George. For doctor, Do you remember your opening? For Dr. Pham, P-H-A-M. Okay, so if the phone rings, ring, ring. Dr. Pham's office, how can I help you? Uh, I would like to make an appointment today. Great. Uh, let me look at our availability here. <laughs> George, works you're, for your no. you're good. Thank you. It's a great receptionist. <laughs> I was probably 14 years old, and they paid $12 an hour, and I was like, I'm rich. That's amazing. Like, why would I go? A minimum wage at the time in Massachusetts was probably, I don't know, seven bucks. 
Mm-hmm. So I was making way more than my friends. Oh, yeah. And I would crush it. I just sat at a desk all day and like, you know, reps would come in from health, from medical companies oh, trying yeah. to sell you on their <gasps> medicines and such. How tall were you just like right above? I could just see little drawers. Honestly, it was a very right high. The yes. The reception desk was way too tall. <laughs> but I had a good time. I'd make yeah, my 12 bucks an hour and then I'd go spend it on like skateboard gear, music yeah. gear. Yeah. Going to the mall with friends. I know. So that was nice. Those were the days. Whew. But yeah, that paycheck, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a special thing, right? Whether you're 14 or you're 34, it is like, it just feels good. Yeah. Payday It's a special feels moment. Good. Yep. And we all know that high of being flush with cash, or at least when you're that age, you know, a hundred bucks is like you're flush with cash. And the writers at BuzzFeed actually took the time to document the emotional stress that you go through on payday. You want to break this down? Let's yeah. set the scene for them. I think this is funny. Okay, so just imagine it's early Friday morning. You wake up. Remember, the fridge is almost empty. The car doesn't have a lot of gas. The cell phone bill is due. Mm. There's just a lot. You're just you're just stressed. And then you roll over. You grab your phone. You see that notification, and you think, it's payday. Suddenly, it just feels what like— What a rush of dopamine. I'm just—I'm rich. I'm rich. All that money's in the account. It's very Endless exciting. possibilities. Going out tonight, drinks on you. Storefront handbag you've been eyeing all week, it's yours, baby. Eating out all weekend, don't mind if I do. Treat yourself. That's how it feels. <laughs> oh, just go big. All The the weekend is here. You want to go out to eat? We're going out to eat. I That's got money. Friday. And then Sunday night hits, and somehow the money's already gone. <laughs> and suddenly you realize— Oh yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't quite quite what I'm what I'm feeling. And you're broke again till Monday, and you're waiting till next payday. Yeah, that's so, kind of the American way, in a sense. And I and I can kind of feel that even now, George. I'm not gonna lie, like not as not that dramatic, but there is something like the money hits the account, and then you're like, oh, but it's gonna be going all here, 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 here. Yes. You know, but at least you have control over it versus just like flying through it. Yes, but as an adult, way. I mean, if you just add up the basic expenses in someone's budget, not even someone who's frivolous, who has crazy subscriptions, just your food, utilities, yes. housing, transportation, insurance, cell phone, internet, the basics in life that we would all say we need to survive. Right. You, all of a sudden, you're like, I'm down to a few hundred bucks, some people. Yeah, not fun. It's a big problem. The worst is insurance. Let's just say uh, we have ours quarterly. Oh, Ugh, yeah. And when it's the month and then the HOA fee gets hit to, you know, HOAs. you just see it and you're just like, man, it's just expensive being an adult. So that it's payday, especially if, you, especially if you don't budget, it feels like insane, right? The money's yes. just floating and going. But again, if you actually have a budget and you're in control, it feels a little bit more peaceful. That's true. So let's rewind. Let's give these nice people listening and watching an alternate version of this payday scenario. Yeah, so you wake up Friday morning. Oh, it's just a beautiful life that I live. Birds are chirping. You look at your phone. You see the notification again. It's payday. Money has hit the account. You kind of give yourself a mental high five. You know exactly where those dollars are going. Rent, check, utilities, check. Got it. Saving for emergency fund, check. Trip to the dentist, check. You know where it's going. Ooh. And then again, your imagination starts to run wild as you look at your eating out budget. You realize, you know, yeah, I can go grab that latte and that pastry on my way to work. Maybe add some oat milk. Because it's... <laughs> Extra dollar, we budgeted for it. Because it's in the budget. And then, you know, you're like, you know, I have brunch tomorrow with friends. Is it in the budget? Sure. Bottomless mimosas with the girls. Thank you. Let's just do it. I have it. It's in the budget. We should do that. That's, and then this all sounds wonderful. The other great thing is you look on Sunday, you're like, ooh, got an extra little too much going at the brunch. So I'm going to have to take some from the miscellaneous category. I'm going to rearrange, make sure I'm still on track. But the idea is you're still in control. Yeah. It's great. It's not like a crisis level situation. You just go, oh, okay, I got to readjust some things. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of piece that we want for you here on this show. I have a very important question for you, George. Would Hit you me. like this little tree? And yeah, yeah, give me the treat. I don't really want it. As give I me keep, all that. I can't enjoy my my drink. With it's too much in your face. Mint. All I like. In my I face. feel like I'm one with the earth. You know, I feel like I could go compost. I'm that. I'm that level of crunchy when I just have mint in my That's nose. That's what I get from you. That's why I thought he would love this little mint tree. I love it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, for that. taking it. You're just a servant, just a giver. <laughs> so this picture is a lot more peaceful, Rachel. We can all agree on that. Payday is great. Running out of money, not so great. A budget is the key to having this peaceful life, which we're not going to make this whole episode about budgeting, but if you've listened to the show, you know it's a big part of it. Well, it is because you know that 
every dollar has a purpose and you know exactly where it's going. And the freedom that comes with it is so great because you're like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what's going on. And when you're spending the money at brunch, when you're spending the money getting the latte, you know it's budgeted for. So you're well, good to go. Most people, they just go, as long as I have money left in the bank before next payday, in general, I'm, I'm great. Yeah, that's but right. But that's still not a great financial plan. You're not going right. to go anywhere with that mentality. I know. So we've all blown the paycheck. And it yeah. stinks. And as we get older, you know, you have more responsibility. So there's less opportunity to just blow a paycheck. Yes. You know, which is good. But some people out there that are adults, maybe some of you listening and watching, <laughs> you're still blowing paychecks yeah. as an adult. And some of it's frivolous. Some of it's just life's expensive. Some of it's debt payments up to your eyeballs. But it doesn't have to be this way. No. And the more intentional it is, the better. So. Love it. Well, you know who the world was watching blow their big paycheck back in 2014? Who? Vince Young. Mm. You might be asking, who's Vince Young? He's a former quarterback for the Tennessee <gasps> Titans. Go Titans. How do I know this? Google. Because I wasn't watching sports back in 2014. Where were you in 2014? Me. Were you in Nashville? I was working here. Yeah, I was in Nashville. Oh. Still not watching sports. Not much has changed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this was apparently happening right under my nose, Rachel. I had no idea. And this okay. is an insane story. Can I uh, Go, regale I, you I'm the gonna, tale? Yep, I'm going to keep on sipping while okay. you tell this. So Vince Young, former quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, blew through his $25 million contract payday. Blew it. He ended up at least a million dollars in debt, mm. possibly up to $10 million. Mm. I don't know how I could do that. Like, I don't know if I could think of enough things to spend money on. For $25 million to To go. blow 25 to $35 I think you million. could do it. If you buy a house... Okay, that's a start. I mean, go buy Maybe a- 2014, a million dollar house. No, if you're going to spend 25 million, I'd get a 15 million dollar house. Then you got 10 In million. In Tennessee? Then you got okay. 10 million to go buy cars and vacation. Uh, maybe that is okay. a lot. That is a lot of money. Oh, shoot. Rachel could do it. If and you want to challenge. <laughs> I'm a spender. I'm just saying that is a lot. That's a lot of money. That's a lot. But that's when he money. went bankrupt, he as, did? As one does. He Poor blamed Vince. negligence and unchecked <gasps> generosity, which is a beautiful new, brand new sentence for me. <laughs> unchecked generosity. Here's what he did. He picked up a $15,000 cheesecake factory tab for himself <laughs> and his team. Did they buy cheesecake? Probably a little bit. Hold on. Is Vince Young middle class? Is he, is he a you bougie You know your middle, middle class, class fancy. You're like, where are we taking the team? Cheesecake Well, factory. I told you that's where I'd love to go on book tour. I love a cheesecake factory. That's right. You and Vince would get along. Wow. And spend $15,000 at Cheesecake Factory. Well, they went, let's just say they went off menu. He claims that teammates were downing expensive shots of Louis the 13th cognac. Cognac. Louis the... Cognac. Che cheesecake Factory does not have Louis the 13th. Apparently. That's not like he high claimed. end. It says he claims. And they left with top shelf wine bottles in hand as well. <laughs> the <laughs> but wait, out of there's the more. Factory. It's like at the Olive Garden where Dom Perignon is. <laughs> like, I mean, if you want to ball out, happen. Olive Garden's where to do it. Unlimited breadsticks. Your money goes a long way. <laughs> I know. But that, now a Louis the 13th is. Have you had that? I've never heard of it. I did not pay for it. Because it's like 115 for like a, a poor? poor. Yeah. Oh my. Oh yeah. No, it's like, it's. And I don't get it. That's the thing. Like, we love a mint julep, but I'm like, that doesn't... Yeah. You can't... Rachel drinks Keurig, so whoever <laughs> bought her that Louis the Thirteenth cognac, it was wasted My on that palate. taste is really cheap. I know. Anyways, all that to say, I don't believe that Louis was there. I think the steakhouse next door probably had it, and they probably shifted there. All okay. that to say, okay. he went bankrupt. Went bankrupt, spending yep. all this money. He also did some nice things. He built a house for his mom in Houston. Oh, he bought nice. two cars... For a single relative. That's pretty baller, I guess. Unchecked generosity is a new term for me. I'm trying to grapple with how I feel about it. I think it's was well-meaning, but also toxic. Yes. So if it's going to make you broke, you're not really being yes. the right kind of generous. That's right. That's right. Yep. And you don't want to enable others, right? So, But blessing others, and I get that because— you know, you do hear a lot of athletes and their stories of oh, where yeah. they come from and they're able to go back to their hometowns. They're able to bless their family. Like, like buy I your get parents that. a house or a car. That's wonderful. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, it's it's when it's the irresponsible side of the payday, right? Yes. That when you're broke because of it and you file for going. bankruptcy. Yeah, it's not blessing a lot of people. Ooh. Or 
at least you. So yeah, okay, that's good. Man, stuff. that's amazing. Okay, yeah. but this does bring up a really good point because even though we make budgets, it's hard to keep sometimes. Like things happen in life. Uh, there's excitement, there's opportunities, and you kind of have to be like, oh my gosh, you have to have this discipline and this character to stay on path. And yes. that's really, it is really hard. We I all feel, have our weak spots. I feel that. And mine's travel. We're doing this oh. episode in summer and I'm like, oh my gosh, over the 4th, we go to Chattanooga and visit friends. We do the aquarium with the kids and the kids, you know, all this stuff starts to add up. And I'm like, oh man, do we have it in the budget? Like, I can get out of control. But you can justify that spending because like, well, travel, it's a great experience. Yeah, it's great we'll for the kids. Remember. The kids are going to love we'll it. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, so I'm like, I, I get it. You can just run away. Mm. And that's what's hard is I think having limits in life which is what a budget is. And actually just financial responsibility is knowing there's a limit, right? And I have to say no to myself at some point. And we don't like to do that as yes. humans. Like that's not fun. Well, a budget gives you freedom. There's guardrails that you're setting on purpose. Yes, absolutely. Which gets you to a better life down the road is saying no, you know, sometimes in the moment, in the present. But it is hard. No one likes to say no. It's not fun. But then once you're in it and you're living it, it's like, okay, if you do take the trip, and you do say, well, we're going to limit this stuff. You have the freedom within that to be like, okay, I feel good about that. I don't have to second guess it. So that's fair. That's what I like about that's it. That's a good one. Okay. It's hard though. I can get down with I that. I could spend so much, George. I really can. Yeah. If I can <laughs> eat my vegetables first, if I'm like, cool, we put the savings aside. The rest is for spending. We have a budget. We got some wiggle room. I can, I can wiggle my way into some deals and I'll be like, hey, I bought this thing. It was a good deal. Like yeah, that's the Middle Eastern part of me you. that I just is in my blood. <laughs> We're like, I can't pass up a good deal. Even if we already have one, I'm like, we're going to need more toilet paper later. Might it's as well buy more while it's on it's sale. Have to happen. So I can I justify know. things because of the sale. And my wife is listening and nodding very hard. Well, right. people act like the hard part is figuring out how to make a ton of money. And as we've seen with countless stories, it's not always about how much money you make. It's learning how to manage the money that you already have. Yes, that's Case exactly in point, right. Matt Two Damon. Of my favorites. <laughs> Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. I love them. They're amazing. I'm from Boston, so I have like a real soft spot for them. Are they as both well. from there? Yes. Mm, didn't know that. So Boston boys, tried and true. Mm. Uh, they figured out. How Mark to make Wahlberg money. is too, right? Mark Wahlberg. The Wahlberg now, brothers. They, yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of talent came out of Boston. Not mm -hmm. just me, Rachel. It wasn't just me. People think it was just me. Uh, they figured out how to make money, and one of my favorite movies of theirs, Goodwill Hunting. So good. They sold that script for six hundred thousand dollars in the late nineties, mm. and they hadn't learned how to manage money yet, and they went broke in six months mm. from that six hundred thousand dollar payday. No, yeah, come on, Matt and Ben. I know, but they were young guys, you know, up and coming writers, so what actors, happened? producers. What they, what they do. So this was first of all. They had a recent interview with Drew Barrymore, and we love Drew Barrymore. Sweet Drew. She's the best. <laughs> As if I know her. Like, you just acted like sweet Drew. I always were, we were DMing the other day. No, I don't know Drew Barrymore. Do you know Drew? No, I'd love to be on you her show. You should be on her I show. should. Drew, someone who knows yes. Drew, get in touch. We got to get Rachel on her show. We will, yeah, let's figure that out. So in a recent interview with Drew Barrymore, Ben Affleck revealed that he and Matt Damon shared a bank account in their 20s. Just two friends <laughs> sharing a bank account. I love it. And all the proceeds from their minor acting gigs, including Burger King commercials, went into this account. So it was a very much like, hey, I support you. You got a gig. Great. We're not going to starve this month. We'll support each other. Really sweet story. Not a good idea financially, but a sweet story. They used it to finance their transportation to auditions and eventually rent a house together. So there we go. They were more on the same page than most married couples. <laughs> Like say, your controversial right. hot take is like if you're married, share a bank account. Matt Damon no. and Ben Affleck did. So if they can, you can. You can too. So the house they rented, it's where they wrote Goodwill Hunting. They eventually sold the script for six hundred thousand dollars. They each ended up with a hundred and ten thousand dollars each after paying agent fees and taxes oh on that. Oh my money. gosh, it's not a lot. Exactly. So in their mind, they're like six hundred grand. We're oh, rich. No. hundred ten grand is still amazing. But that can go quick. But it's not six hundred. So you got to budget for stuff like taxes, even when you know you have a big check coming, yeah. stuff like that. If the taxes aren't taken out, account for that. So Ben Affleck's reaction at the time, here's a direct quote. We are now rich for life. My needs are over. I will never have to work again. I'm rich forever. We all remember that how feeling. Old, how old was he? He was in his 20s. So you're wondering, where did this $110,000 go? Well, they each bought $55,000 Jeep Cherokees, Grand Jeep Cherokees. <laughs> Very hot car in Boston during that time. And they rented a <laughs> party house by the Hollywood Bowl that was $5,000 a month. Oh, my gosh. 
Which was a lot. What year was this? In the 90s, in the late 90s. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, Five grand a month on a party house. And of course, with party income, more expensive. Cherokees, and those were the boxed ones then. Remember those? Oh, they yeah. Were, uh, yep. uh, I remember those. All that to say, Matt and Ben went broke in six months thanks to their $55,000 Jeeps and their $5,000 a month party houses. But now they learned their lesson. Fast forward, George. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Uh, ben Affleck now earns $15 million per movie, and Matt Damon's about $10 million. Wow. So they're doing great. They're okay. If you guys are wondering, if you were scared for them. They are doing great and they're thriving. Doing, and they're so doing thank multiple you for movies for your a year. concern, but they're doing good. That's they are doing good. Easily multiple millions a month if they're doing multiple a year. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I want to hear from you guys. So comment below on Ooh. would you want your total salary up front at the beginning of the year? That's an interesting <gasps> question. No. Shoot, yes, because then I would, oh, well, no. I don't know. I don't know. I think current me would say yes, but I also think you'd have to have such incredible management skills to yeah, not Yeah, I it. think it just feels good on the 15th and the 31st just to, yeah. yeah, I'd spread it out. Agreed. What if it was every single day? It got split, and every no, single day you no, got no, like no, a no. few hundred bucks. That makes me sad. Because then you'd blow that hun- few hundred bucks? No, you'd blow it, but it's just like, oh. That's sad. Yeah. <laughs> like like a half and half feels right per month. Okay. I could even go once a month. That's fair. I could do like on the first. I still think people would blow through that too fast. Yeah, maybe like They'd so. get like 20 days into the month and be like, crap. I know. That's yeah, that's interesting. true. It's an inter- interesting concept. Yes. To so say like, what, how would I manage it really well if I yes. got a lump sum per year instead yep. of monthly paychecks? All right. But I would say that not all the celebs, you know- did it the hard way. Some of them like actually did well with their money management. Yeah. So here are some fun ways of how some celebrities spent their first paycheck. You ready? Okay, hit me. Julia Roberts, love her. She used part of her first paycheck to buy a boom box. <laughs> That's a noble purchase. She wanted to jam. What was your first Julia Roberts movie that you saw? Do you remember? Uh, I was in the, I remember going to Notting Hill in the theater. Oh, wow. So it was like Runaway Bride, Notting Hill. She had a few that came out, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Like right together. I was, t- I'm too young to do The Pretty Woman, like when it came out. I mean, I saw it later Fair. in life. Yeah. But I wasn't there. Like, I was Runaway Bride. You era. know what? Steel Magnolias actually may have been mm. my first Julia Roberts movie. I, and that's a hard one to watch as a kid, but we did. Dave and Sharon, we didn't, they didn't hold back on the movies. <laughs> we watched everything. Wow. Anyways, all that to say. Uh, Way to go, Julia. Steel Magnolias, very, Kind of sad, traumatic movie to watch as a child. Shelby? I'll tell her- you, our mixologist, Michael Reddish, favorite movie, Steel Magnolias. No, it's not. He had me watch it for the first time, like, like a two years ago. I wish ago. she was here. We yeah. could talk about it. He was like, you haven't seen it? You have to see it. So I watched What'd it. What'd you think about it? It was great. It's a great it held movie. Up. Dolly? Mm. Love Dolly. Sally right. Field? Man, there's some, that's a, that actually is a great movie. Next up on Celebrity's First Paychecks, George Clooney bought a TV set for his friend's grandma. I mean, that's generous. Mm-hmm. Grandma's one thing. Very sweet. Friends, grandma, hey, next level generosity. Well done, George. Here's the quote. I was living in a closet of my buddy's apartment with his grandmother. I bought her a TV with a remote because she would always have to get up and go change the channel. So with my first check, I bought her a TV. Okay, that's precious. That's so what sweet. What a man. What a heart for the elderly. What a man. We love to see it. Uh, next, Destiny's Child's own Kelly Rowland. Oh. Love, love those, love those years of them all together. So she spent her first big paycheck on fancy groceries. Quote, when I got one of my first paychecks, I went to the grocery store and bought everything that my mom used to tell me was too expensive. I love that. That's fun. All right. Next up, Serena Williams took her first million dollar paycheck, not just any paycheck, a million dollar paycheck straight to the bank. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And here's her quote. I never touched the money. I just put it in the bank. I remember when I went through the drive-thru to deposit my check, and then they were like, I think you need to come in for this. So I ended up going inside. She was trying to put it in the little tube thing. Like, a million dollars. Yeah, you probably have to go in and sign some stuff. If you're just, putting a million dollars. Like, this is legitimate money. I'm not forging a check. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. That's All right, a fun next, one. Uh, Matt LeBlanc, friends, Joey. Hey. Uh, so doing? he spent his first friend's paycheck on a hot meal. So when he booked the role, he only had $11 to his name. So a nice warm dinner was something mm. he hadn't had in a while. 
Matt. A war- so he's eating they cold meals? They actually call meals? him Matty on the show. I didn't know that. Yeah. I call him All Joey. Matty. That's really sad, but also sweet. Yeah. It's crazy to think that these celebrities before these, uh, we know them now, were just like normal broke people. I know. Just hoping to like get the gig. Good for them. Pretty I love wild. that. Mm-hmm. Next up, Nicole Kidman. Her first paycheck, she bought a washing machine for her parents. Oh. There's something that, t- it tells me a lot about your character when you get that first paycheck and you spend it on someone else. Totally. Yep. It's really nice. That's impressive. She yep. admits later on that she bought some boots for herself that were the coolest boots she had ever seen in her life. <laughs> no, and I badly want to see these boots. I know. What do they look what like? What were they? Were they Uggs? Ne- probably <laughs> not Uggs. Next, Tom Cruise. He paid for his sister's college tuition. That's and with sweet. his second big paycheck... He bought his other sister a car. Wow. Tom, you can say a lot about him. You can say a lot. But that's generous. That's amazing. That's generous. Do you think, though, George, like that money just makes you more of what you are? We talk about that a lot. It's like a magnifying glass. And there's something in that, that it's like the more money you have, the more of who you are shines through. 100%. Now, I think people can change over time. So I think a celebrity who blew the first big paycheck is not a bad person just because they spent it on more frivolous things. Yeah. But- if you're generous when you don't have money, when you get a big pile of money and you have a heart for generosity, you're going to You buy your sister a car, you buy like, washing machines. Can I bless? You, yep, yep, you go and help the people in That's your life. so good. I love that. I so, bet yeah. Tom Cruise was generous before he got the big paychecks. You know, that yeah. was the kind of guy Tom is. Yep. So I think that is important that with all this, regardless of your paycheck size, small or large, your character through life is really important, right? So whether it's um, being kind, being honest, having integrity, all of that is huge because, again, as you start to build wealth, which is what we want everyone to do is get control of your money, be investing, be smart, be generous, all these things, your character ends up magnifying over time. And I think that's a really important part. So working on that and understanding that is big. That's huge. And, I mean, you talk about this in your book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, but understanding where all this comes from, the motivation, the way you grew up, the money classrooms you talk about in the book, that's so important. And realizing I can change. If I have like a spending habit that's bad right now, this isn't just who I am. It's not your identity. Right. And so you can make those changes and eventually become more generous. You can still be a spender and be wise. You can do both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is a good reminder of all of that. that It's not really about the paycheck. No. And it's fun to talk about the stories, good and bad, but it's not about the paycheck. It's what you do with it. And who you are. Yep. Wow. What hey, a beautiful. Cheers, cheers we to really, payday. We landed that plane. Cheers to payday. Cheers to payday. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? Mm-hmm. The day of this recording is payday. I know. I thought about this morning. So In everyone, my every dollar app, I was like, oh, here's our. Choo, 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 it's a great feeling. Yep, That's why everyone in this, in this room right now is so happy. You can't <laughs> so see happy. it, but they're all today. beaming with joy. <laughs> It's so good. All right, George. Well, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer Lindsay gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. So, Lindsay, what is it today? I got a juicy one. Oh, I can't wait. Have you ever lied in an interview as a teenager or your early adult years? Ooh. <laughs> when they're like, "What's your greatest weakness?" And it's like, I care too much. Have you ever lied? Let's let's hear it. I for sure have. Yeah, I'm drinking to that, Rachel. Rachel's never lied. She's honest able to do Yeah, no. (laughs) If the manager of Libby Lou said, can you work a lot? And I said, yes, then I lied. Wow. Um, Gosh, I'm sure I did. Okay, I do feel like I live in a bubble, y'all, because I came here after college. Oh, you've been here for like 19 years. I know, so y'all. you didn't have to lie to get so this, Libby this one. So Libby Lou's your only, that's your, did that's you ever lie one. with babysitting or like? Oh, I'm sure I did. I, I mean, I probably, I, I really played with the kids. I was a terrible, I, I mean, this isn't lying. I just, I have babysitters now. And I was like, I was a terrible babysitter. I left oh, wow. dishes and all, I mean, I was not. Clean I, was, up after. I was not a great babysitter, so. Well. So don't ask Rachel to babysit kids. your kids. She's not doing it. So I played with the kids, though. That's good. But yeah, I'm trying to think. I it, Let me say this. I have the personality that I would embellish and be very confident <laughs> nice in something that I it. feel like I could yeah. like really, I feel like I could do it, though. Like, I'm like, I really believe it in myself. Mm-hmm. Like if it was so, a lie detector test, it would be like, oh, she didn't lie. She was just very passionate to where the <laughs> yes. lie detector test was like, that's Did truth. you lie? Have you yeah. ever lied? What was so it? So remember? remember, I've shared this, that I got fired from the Apple store. Mm-hmm. After I got fired, I tried to find another job. 
and I like coffee, and I was I was playing little acoustic gigs at Starbucks. So I went to that Starbucks, and mm-hmm. I went, hey, I'd love to work here. Got an interview, and they asked me if I got fired from a last job. Oh, shoot. Or like, why'd you leave your last job? And I was like, I'm going to be honest. I think it's the right thing to do. So I told them I got fired. That was the final interview because I did not get the job. So my next interview at Urban Outfitters, I 1,000% lied. And I even got my old manager from Apple, like one of the managers to be like, hey, if they call you, like don't tell them I got fired. (laughs) Tell them only good things about me. It's like a conspiracy. And I got the job at Urban Outfitters. Oh, man. Making my $8 an hour. You know? Do what you got to do, Sticking it to the man. Just doing what you got to do. But it is stink because I wanted to be honest, and it backfired, and then I learned, like, oh, I can't tell them what happened. See, but did you, fi- did you like, flat out lie, or did you say, like, it just didn't really work out? I don't out. think it they were. I think like, they were did like, you go like, more? why'd you leave your last job? And I was probably like, you know, just career ambitions to work at Urban <laughs> Outfitters. I, guess. I don't know. Like, I definitely did not tell them the whole truth. Yeah. I which, know. in the cruise house, is a lie. Well... Money makes you more of what you already are. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'll tell you, I blew all of that Urban Outfitters paycheck on the 40% off discount. I bet and you I just did. bought clothes. Which is probably what every, like, a lot of people do there. Yep. It's mm-hmm. fine. So that's my sad story. That's it. Okay. Lying. For a good cause. That's a good For one. a job. For a job. Just unemployed. <laughs> oh, man. But, okay. Side note, real quick. You know the whole, like, fake it till you make it? There's a point where that gets you in trouble, though. Like, as adults, 100%. you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, right? Don't, I wouldn't, like, fake a resume and job experience and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they straight up asked me, like, were you fired, I would, I couldn't not sure, tell them Sure, 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 sure. But why did you leave your last job? It's One a little ambiguous. Questions. You can kind of, like, Squishier. figure your way around it. Yeah. I and get that. You were that. a teenager. Oh. Yeah, so right. It was a disagreement of sorts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Oh, okay. okay. Who's almost finished? This was a, this was a large pour. It was just a lot of liquid. Like, I'm halfway done because it's just so much liquid. Yes. So we, uh, I think I'm, you're, are you closer? You're closer. Mm-hmm. You did great. Good Thanks. job. Thanks. So we had a mint julep today, and I'll tell you what's in it, because you guys waited for the very end of this episode. Proud of you. Bourbon, mint leaves, simple syrup, and some bitters. That's it. It's a very simple drink, and the cost breakdown comes out to $3 even to make a mint julep at home. And uh, what's your rating on this one? You know, part of my rating now is would I order that at a restaurant? Oh, that's a good filter. And I don't think I would. I would order other cocktails we've had. Bee's Knees was a good one. I can oh, think yeah. of Like I've had others. The Negroni was good for uh, me. Yep. So I would not probably order this at okay. a restaurant. Uh, but it wasn't bad. So I'm going to go a seven. Okay. Seven out of 10 for Rachel. I'm going to go eight out of 10. If I was at the Kentucky Derby, give me one of these all day long. Oh, so fun. Yeah, but yeah, again, yeah. like you, I want something a little more maybe complex, mm-hmm. a little more sour, a little more spice, just a little more going on. But I do love the mint. I think mint is an underrated ingredient. And uh, Michael did a – this is probably the best mint julep I've had. So it's no – It's delicious. No diss to yeah, our mixologist, no, no, Michael. No, 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 It's not that. It's just not necessarily my right. cocktail of choice all the time. Well, hey, if you want to make it on a nice sunny day, yeah, go for it. We'll put the recipe in the show notes and uh, let us know Maybe how you like it. that's what it is. Maybe I should close my eyes and imagine myself with a big old hat and a the giant dress floppy hat. And and we're watching horses. You're watching horses race against their will. I love that it's you're actually time. envisioning this. Right now. <laughs> it's a ten. We should go to the Kentucky. But we're in a studio on a Thursday afternoon, about to go home. Wow. Way it to really bring the party down. <laughs> yeah, you right really quick. did bring the mood down. Everyone thought this is a Monday morning uh-huh. and they're having a great time at work. <laughs> no, Rachel's ready to go home. <laughs> it's fine. Oh my gosh. But that was fun. Well, George, this was a great episode. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. We would love to hear from you too. You heard yes. where our first paychecks came from and what we blew them on. We want to hear from you guys. What was yours? It's Drop so fun. a comment. Don't be shy. Yeah, it's fun to, to read the comments and see you guys. And we love the interaction. So make sure to do that. Leave a review as well if you haven't. It's very helpful. Subscribe, all the things, so you don't miss a new episode. Because it's been fun, George. We have a great time. Here it's we the are. most fun we can have legally. That's right, on payday. That's right. So we'll see you guys next Thursday on a new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Hour.